today I want to share with you how to stock your healing pantry and create your herbal medicine cabinet. This is a very important part of your prepper pantry. Hi sweet friends, I'm Mary and welcome to Mary's Nest where I teach traditional cooking skills for making nutrient-dense foods like bone broth, ferment, sourdough, and more. So if you enjoy learning how to be a modern pioneer in the kitchen, consider subscribing to my channel. And don't forget to click on the little notification bell below that'll let you know every time I upload a new video. The first thing I want to say is that any time you want to jump ahead in this video, be sure to check the description below where I'll have the chapter timestamps listing everything I'm going to cover. The next thing I want to mention is that I have a printable for you, no email required, that's going to cover everything we're going to talk about today. We'll go over this printable in detail and I think you'll find it very helpful as you begin to start stocking your healing pantry and creating your medicinal herbal cabinet and then it's a wonderful resource to keep in your kitchen journal. This is my kitchen journal that I have in front of me. It's just a homemade thing. I have a video where I share with you all about it and I'll be sure to link to that in the description below because if you are on your journey to creating a traditional foods kitchen and becoming a modern pioneer in the kitchen, keeping a kitchen journal can be a real lifesaver because you can compile all the various notes you have as you start to learn and make traditional foods. And so you always have something to refer back to. So definitely start working on your kitchen journal if you've not had a chance. Well, we're having a bit of an ice storm here today. So I thought it would be fun to have a fire, have some hot tea, and have us all just sit down today and chat. Recently, in an article that I wrote on my blog, I began speaking about the healing pantry. And I promised that I would do a video for you to go into more detail about this. So today I want to expand on what the healing pantry is all about. Specifically, it's an area that you designate in your prepper pantry. Just like when you were creating your emergency pantry, which is a part of your prepper pantry that you dedicate to having those foods and supplies that you need in the event that you don't have electricity or you don't have clean running water and you need to know how you can make meals and be prepared and so on and so forth, the healing pantry is very similar in that you carve out, so to speak, a certain area of your prepper pantry where you begin to designate that space to store the various herbs and spices and supplies that you need to make your home remedies. And within that healing pantry where you're keeping all your raw materials, your herbs and your spices and your supplies to make your home remedies, you'll then have your little area that I like to refer to as my herbal medicine cabinet. And that's where I like to keep those things that have been prepared and turned into home remedies. And I have a whole series of videos where I walk you through all types of master recipes for making different medicinal herbal home remedies. I show you how to make herbal teas, tinctures, oils, salves, soups, and syrups. So it's a very broad uh, playlist that I have going over a lot of different ways to make various types of her her herbal remedies using herbs as well as spices and I show you the various equipment that you need. So today what I want to focus on is how exactly to go about carving out this space in your prepper pantry and what you should be stocking in it to be prepared to use those master recipes that I've shared with you in the past to make the various home remedies you may need. Now I just want to share a word of caution with you. When it comes to home remedies in general, specifically herbal remedies, you do want to keep in mind if you're pregnant or nursing, thinking of using these things with children, if you're taking medication over the counter or prescription, or if you have allergies, you really want to do your research because certain herbs may not agree with you based on those various conditions. You can certainly talk to your uh, medical practitioner about this and certainly if you're not well, uh, definitely don't hesitate to get the medical, the professional medical attention you need. Now speaking of doing your research, I highly recommend 
any book out there by a woman named Rosemary Gladstar. She's been writing herbal books probably going back to the 1970s, or at least she's been teaching uh, herbal uh, home remedies and whatnot since probably around the 1970s. I've got two of her books here. Uh, if you are completely new to this, a complete beginner, I highly recommend her Medicinal Herbs, A Beginner's Guide. This is a wonderful book. It's just an oversized paperback. It's not expensive. And she covers a lot of different herbs, how to know them, how to grow them, and how to use them. I highly recommend this book. She also has her herbal recipes for vibrant health, 175 teas, tonics, oils, salves, tinctures, and other natural remedies for the entire family. This is also a wonderful book. Also, in addition to Rosemary's books, I really like this book. It's called The Herbal Kitchen, and it's by Cammie McBride. And you know it's gonna be good because guess who wrote the foreword? Rosemary Gladstar. And she focuses on herbs and spices, and basically how to take all of these relatively common culinary herbs and spices, how to incorporate them into your food to improve your nutrition and also help to combat germs and illness and make you feel better, whatever the case may be. Well, let me enjoy a little sip of this tea. I want to tell you about this tea in a minute. Mm. This is so good. This is an herb tea. But if you like caffeinated tea, this tastes very much like a black tea or a green tea. So you'll notice this very cute mug I have. It says Mary's Nest. For those of you who know Denise over at This and That with Denise, she's got the uh, wonderful YouTube channel all about homemaking. She covers everything, cooking, cleaning, uh, the wash, the work. She's really great. You have to check out her channel. But she has a sister named Mickey who does a lot of artwork. And Sweet Mickey made this beautiful mug for me. And it's got all the little cardinals and I, I just adore it. So thank you, Mickey. Shout out to Mickey. She's a sweet lady. Uh, what I want to say is that I wanted to share with you that although I think those of you who know me know that I always tell you, I don't want you to stress about anything. I want you to uh, move to creating a traditional foods kitchen, creating your Four Corners pantry, little by little, Four Corners being your working pantry, your refrigerator, your freezer, and your prepper pantry, as well as these little subsets within your prepper pantry, the emergency pantry, and, and your healing pantry. But I never want you to feel rushed or overwhelmed. I created these, in essence, or stocked them, so to speak, over time. None of this happened overnight. And so I always like to explain that, yes, you can do a lot with bulk herbs and make a lot of home remedies, especially uh, herbal teas are very easy to pull together. Uh, but I just wanted to share what I'm drinking here is a brand of teas that I really recommend. And I have no connection to this company. I just really like these teas. And the reason that I wanted to share this with you, if you want to have some really good high quality uh, herbal teas on hand that really are touted, so to speak, as medicinal herbal teas because you're not in a position yet to be kind of making your own. Uh, I wanted to share with you, these are called uh, Organic India is the brand. And this is Tulsi. Tulsi, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, is holy basil. And that's a, uh, an herb that I do recommend that you try to keep on hand. Holy basil is one of those herbs that's basically just a fix-all. If something bothers you, you'll often hear people recommend, well, have some holy basil tea, it'll help you. And it's really revered, especially in India. And so they make some wonderful, uh, what, this particular brand, Organic India, they make some wonderful teas. And Tulsi, just straight up, which is what I'm having now, you will literally think that it's like a regular tea. So if you've never been like maybe a fan of herb teas, but I hope that over time you, your palate will become a fan of herb teas, uh, Tulsi is a great place to start uh, because it tastes very similar uh, to what we think of as traditional teas. You know, herbal teas are really, if I'm pronouncing it correctly, they're tisanes, uh, not teas per se, although we use the 
Monica herbal teas. But this tastes to me kind of like I'm drinking a black tea or a green tea, depending how long I steep it. So this is something to keep in mind. Uh, you can keep this right in your working pantry. And I have a variety of them uh, because they have, they have a lemon ginger. It's Tulsi with the lemon ginger flavor. Uh, they have Tulsi turmeric ginger. I really like this one because turmeric is so anti-inflammatory. It helps with aches and pains among a lot of other things. And then Tulsi Moringa, this is like, I really feel is like the star of their teas because the star of the show, so to speak, because Moringa like Tulsi is also uh, considered one of those, you know, fantastic herbs that is just good for your overall body. So I just wanted to mention that, you know, before we get into this, because I never want you to feel overwhelmed. You want to stock your healing pantry little by little and learn how to make medicinal uh, remedies little by little. Now, speaking about home remedies or medicinal remedies, whatever you like to call them, something that uh, you will eventually want to learn about is uh, the concept known as homeopathy. And there are a number of companies that sell different types of uh, little tablets uh, that you can either put under your tongue or you can chew. And you'll also want to have a reference guide on hand uh, that explains the different combinations of these homeopathic tablets or chews that uh, help to gently treat particular conditions over time. Companies that make these type of things, and again, I have no connection to any of these companies. They're just brands that I have used. One is Highlands that's been around for years and they have some combination homeopathic remedies and then they also sell the individual homeopathic tablets. Uh, another company that I've been using their products of and I like very much is called Genexa. And what's nice about Genexa is, and I'll link to all of this so in case you wanna educate yourself and learn about it you know, in the description below. Uh, Genexa uh, makes a lot of nice combination ones for allergies and cold and flu, aches and pains, you know, different things like that. So that's definitely something to think about as you educate yourself more about what you want to have in terms of under your home remedy umbrella and what you want to stock in your healing pantry. I think my fire's dying out and it's in the 20s today and it's still chilly in our house. So I'm gonna put another log on the fire. Now, as you begin to dedicate an area of your prepper pantry for your healing pantry, this inventory list will help you keep track of what you have and what you may need. As you decide on the area of your prepper pantry, where you want to store your various healing pantry supplies, this inventory list will come in very handy for you. This will help you keep track of what you have and what you need. What I've done here is first list all the various herbs that I think are important to keep in a healing pantry. And this is all in dried form because remember your prepper pantry is the place where non-perishable foods and dried herbs, dried spices, so on and so forth are stored. Now I have two videos, one where I go over what I consider are sort of my top 10 herbs that I like to keep on hand. And then I did a follow-up video uh, where I share with you my top five herbs in addition to the top 10 for a total of 15. Uh, plus I've got some two extra bonus herbs that you had shared with me and I definitely wanted to include those. So I'll be sure to link to those uh, videos because I do list more than the, that would be 17 herbs. I do list more here, uh, but those were, I was trying to whittle it down to the definite must-haves and those first 10 were kind of the must-haves. Uh, but in any event, I then have a column for the number that you have stored. And then if you have any garden seeds stored as well. So if you're going to be trying to grow any of these herbs in a sunny windowsill garden or on a patio, a balcony, or even if you have a kitchen garden that's outside and dedicated uh, for herbs, if you have a little portion of it that you dedicate for herbs, do you have any seeds on hand to grow those herbs. So you keep track of what, what you've, how much you've stored of each 
you know, and I'm talking, you know, bottles, jars, or, you know, however you want to designate the amount, and then whether or not you have garden seeds to plant those herbs. So I think that's in, those are kind of the two important things. What do you have? How much do you have? And do you have seeds ready to plant to grow what you might like? Speaking of seeds, I just want to mention that if you've not had a chance to see the video I did where I did a review of the seeds that are so, sold by the company Survival Garden Seeds, I highly recommend that you watch that video if you're interested in seeds and trying to grow some of your own uh, vegetables, herbs, fruits, whatever the case may be. Uh, because the good news is I have a discount coupon code for you uh, if you decide to order one of their three uh, survival garden seed packages and I'll be sure to link to my shopping guide in the description below where you can find that uh, discount coupon code and while you're over on my website uh, be sure to check out the blog post that I have all about survival garden seeds there's some very exciting news about a promotion that they're going to be running over the next couple of weeks so little by little you can start stocking the herbs that you want to keep on hand based on what home remedies you think you might make. And that's where having one of these reference books to help you determine what herbs you may like to keep on hand, because you don't necessarily need all of these. You may like certain herbs to help you with certain little, you know, day-to-day -day maladies that can be easily helped with various herbal remedies. And so if you know, oh gee, we have a little trouble sleeping and maybe we'd like to make a, a tea that would help us relax, well then, by all means, you'll want to keep chamomile on hand. And I have a video where I show you how to make what I call my, I think it's great night sleep tea or something, and it's got some chamomile in it. It also has some lavender in it. And these are relatively easy herbs to grow as well as to find in various sources that sell dried herbs. But I highly recommend that you, even if you think, oh, I don't have a green thumb, I highly recommend that you give a try to growing some herbs because I've often said that in many cases, herbs are kind of like weeds. As a matter of fact, some, you may even have some in your yard right now if you have a, a, a little grassy area. And you may have something like plantain, and not, it's not the one that looks like a banana, it looks like a green leaf. And you probably just thought it was a nasty old weed, uh, but it's actually an herb. So uh, herbs often are easier to grow than a lot of other things, and herbs are a wonderful place to get started if you're new to gardening. Uh, I, years and years ago, herbs was really what I started with, that and cherry tomatoes, <laughs> because they're relatively easy to grow as well. So definitely think about that, but there's something I want to mention that I alluded to in the beginning about, you know, when you are educating yourself about herbs and you need to be careful depending what condition that you may be having. If you are prone to allergies that are related to things like hay fever, you want to educate yourself as to which herbs may aggravate hay fever. And sometimes people who are subject to hay fever, chamomile can aggravate that. So you just want to be conscious, but you don't have to feel bad because even though we often think of chamomile as the wonderful sleep you know, the, the ingredient often used to make sleep teas, there are a whole host of herbs that can help relax you and help you drift off to dreamland that are not uh, associated with uh, causing uh, hay fever reactions. So that's why, you know, I really can't stress enough. I know I talk a lot, whenever we get on the subject of herbs, I talk a lot about Rosemary Gladstar and Cammie McBride. I just love them. And I don't know them, but I love them uh, because they're so knowledgeable, yet they keep it so simple. And that's what we really need. You know, as home cooks, as I often use the expression, you know, modern pioneers in the kitchen on a traditional foods journey, you know, in whatever way you think of yourself, we're often very busy and we need things really kept simple for us. And not like it's an insult to our intelligence, of course not. 
Uh, but whenever we're learning something new, especially about herbs and spices, and also how to make home remedies using herbs and spices, the, the more simple the explanation, the less complicated, it makes the journey easier. Yes, you want to read something more complicated down the road. There's so many scientific articles written about the healing properties of herbs and the healing properties of spices. It can become fascinating. You can quickly, what do they say, go down a rabbit hole or a rabbit trail <laughs> on the internet, you know, reading about uh, all of the things scientists have studied. But when you're new to this, when you're starting out, uh, the simpler things are explained, the better. And that's why I love books like this. And I really wanted to create that series that I share with you uh, for master recipes for making medicinal herbal remedies because I wanted to keep things simple and easy. So as you go through the herbs, you really can store them any way you want. Uh, I do like to keep them, you know, out of direct sunlight. I keep them in the area that uh, sort of under my stairwell uh, where I just have sort of... Uh, carved out, so to speak, an area for some of my herbs. I also keep some in a cabinet uh, wherever I can find space because I so relate that you have told me you don't necessarily have a big dedicated prepper pantry area and I don't either. You know, I find little places here and there uh, throughout my house to uh, stock what I need, what I need to have on hand uh, so that I'm not running out of things, so I'm not rushing to the store, so I'm not having to buy things at full price, so that I can take advantage of sales, so on and so forth. Um, and I know you've asked me about these jars. They're Fido, F-I-D-O jars. Uh, they're made in Italy. Uh, they used to be very reasonable with inflation. I have no idea now <laughs> how they might be priced, uh, but I have found them at World Market and I have found them at uh, thrift stores, and of course they're you know, available online. And don't worry if you, they make quite the uh, nice airtight seal, don't worry if you find one and the gasket is all dried out or it's, uh, or it's missing, still get the jar, because you can come home, give the jar a good washing, let it air dry, and then you can find these often at different places, you know, sort of, you know, like sometimes your little supply stores, your little uh, hardware stores, uh, they'll often have these replacement gaskets. Uh, and then of course, yes, they're always available online and they're reasonable. So definitely don't turn your nose up to jars that you find like this that don't have a satisfactory gasket or are missing it. It's very easy to find uh, the replacement parts for that. Canning jars work great. You can use the white storage lids. You can use a, a spent, uh, you know, one that you've already used, a, a spent canning lid with the ring. You can even use the new uh, lids that uh, the ball canning company is selling. They're gray. They're supposed to be airtight. They have like a little gasket uh, inside. So there are a lot of options uh, available to you to how uh, you want to store your herbs. Another option is if you're very concerned, like maybe you live in a, in a very uh, a damp climate or whatever the case may be, I have heard from you that uh, some of you will put your dried herbs in a brown paper bag and then put it into one of those uh, food saver type bags. There's different ones. Food saver is one particular brand. There's a lot out there. And again, you know, I have no connection to any of these companies. And you put the brown paper bag into the plastic bag and then seal it. So you've got this beautiful airtight, well, uh, preserved dry herb or spice. And the reason for the brown paper bag is, as you have told me, uh, you like to protect your herbs from the plastic. You don't necessarily want it be, you know, the plastic touching. You'd rather just have, you know, the brown paper uh, bag touching it. So, so that, I think, is a very good option. Also, we're going to talk about these in a minute because this is part of when we get to the supplies part. Uh, these are just little muslin bags, and if you like to 
not you know have waste or whatever that's associated with maybe paper that uh, yes you can certainly recycle it but you know bottom line is you know you're disposing it if you want something that's not disposable uh, you could get these unbleached little uh, Muslim bags they're they're usually made I'm not sure specifically about these these may be made uh, I think these are made from even organic cotton and they're at least when I bought these they they were affordable you could put your herbs in here and then you could put them into the plastic bag and use the food saver to seal it I think that might work too I'd be interested in hearing from some of you if you've tried that and if you were happy uh, with the uh, results. Next, what I've listed here are spices. And again, the, I really look forward to hearing from you in the comments if when you download this and print this out, and by the way, speaking of downloading and printing out, I have, if you're new here, welcome, I have a lot of printables for you that they're free there's no email required nothing I really feel I'm very passionate about this and I really feel we all need to help each other as much as we can uh, so print out as many as you want or download them keep them on your phone whatever way you work with these things and share them share them with your family share them with your friends share them with your neighbors the more we are all prepared the better I think we all learn that after 2020 the more prepared the better we help ourselves we help our families we can help our neighbors you know it, it's very important to be prepared so that's why I, I spend a lot of time talking about the four corners pantry and everything that goes into that including the prepper pantry and so but what I'd like to hear from you in the comments is as you download this as you look through this if you feel that there are herbs and spices that are very important and that I've left them off let me know because I update my various pantry lists my various pantry inventory lists my various meal plans you know menus all of this I try to update this by incorporating what you share with me so it's very important so definitely let me know you know in the comments below and I would also love hearing uh, from the different uh, hearing from you about the different herbs and spices that you've used that have helped you uh, with your health uh, so anyway so then we've got spices again dried and I just start alphabetically I've got anise up here the seeds or the stars whatever you have and I go all the ways down to turmeric uh, the turmeric root and and keeping that in a ground form uh, can be very helpful now what about fresh herbs and spices can you keep fresh herbs definitely you might be cutting them from your garden you might have them uh, that you got at the farmers market or at the grocery store and you have them in your refrigerator or you've chopped some up maybe and froze them in little ice cube trays all of these things are wonderful and all of these things are worth keeping on hand they can not only assist you in making different uh, home remedies especially the medicinal herbal soups that I share with you but they also serve wonderful culinary purposes and in essence when you use herbs whether they're fresh frozen or dried in your meals you are not only enhancing the flavor because they are often used as culinary herbs the herbs that are known you know for culinary herbs like oregano and basil and so on and so forth but that also have medicinal properties as Cami explains in her book you're introducing wonderful flavor but at the same time you're also ingesting basically you're taking in all of the healing properties that are associated with those herbs in addition to their flavorful culinary properties so you can never go wrong having a, a sufficient or I would even say like a really good supply of uh, fresh herbs frozen herbs and very important dried herbs and spices uh, but turmeric root if you find it at your grocery store and it's fresh it's wonderful for throwing into a bone broth but if you don't have that you can use the ground turmeric you know they often can trade off just in slightly different amounts and I always share this in detail with you uh, so that you know how much to use of a dried versus how much to use a, 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 as a fresh but the good news is a lot of the traditional foods we make are not an exact science so don't worry you very rarely can go wrong 
Uh, but I have a great video. Uh, I love bone broths, you know that. But I especially love making anti-inflammatory bone broths. I think those are so important for helping, you know, to fend off colds and flus, to help with aches and pains. You know, anti-inflammatory herbs and spices do so much for our over overall well-being because tamping down inflammation is one of the best things that we can do for our bodies. Because if our bodies don't have to work overtime fighting inflammation, they can help to fight any germs that we may be exposed to just through the course of daily living. For the spice section, for this particular printable, I often want to say handout like I'm a teacher at school <laughs> handing this out. I basically just got boxes and you can just check those. Uh, I didn't go into the same level of detail for how much you have stored and whether you have garden seeds to grow these. And the reason is I focus a lot on uh, stocking my particular healing pantry with herbs. And often these spices that I keep on hand are in smaller jars that are actually in my working pantry. Now, do I have backups that I can refill my working pantry jars with? Yes. And I keep those in my healing pantry, in my prepper pantry. And so I don't always necessarily focus on exactly how much I have. I just will put a check mark indicating that, okay, yes, I do have backups to refill the jars that are in my working pantry. Also, I didn't focus on seeds because these are often things that may not easily grow. It really depends where you live. These are things that may not uh, e be easy to grow in your area, uh, especially in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, but there are some things that you may decide that you want to try your hand at, like trying to grow ginger. You know, taking, I think I've talked about this with you in my video about how to grow various uh, vegetables and spices from scraps. And you can take a knob of gingers. Sometimes you'll notice if you leave your ginger out on the counter, it'll get like a little knob. Sometimes it'll even start to sprout a little greenery. And you can plant that and you can grow ginger. And there's some wonderful videos uh, by other people who just focus on gardening. And they show you, you know, how to do this. Now, it does take a while and you have to be patient. Uh, so you may or may not, you know, be growing your own fresh ginger. But it can be fun to experiment with that. The same with garlic, the same with onion. Garlic and onions are a little easier to grow and you can have some fun with that. But other things like cinnamon, you know, that's the bark of a tree and, and whatnot, you know, are often things that I do purchase. I keep a small container in my working pantry and then I have uh, a backup supply in my healing pantry. So that's basically why I've just done that. If you would like me to prepare some type of inventory list that went into a little more detail, let me know in the comments below. But I find that this, this work usually works very well. One thing I want to share with you, if you live in an area where there are a lot of juniper trees, because under the spice area I do have juniper berries, uh, I like to cook with juniper berries very much, especially like when I'm making a sour braten or something like that. And we have a lot of those around here in Central Texas. We call them cedar trees. So you may be able to actually forage uh, for your juniper berries if you have those types of trees in your area. And again, not unlike the herbs, uh, the way I'll store my spices uh, in my working pantry, I'm just, I usually just have small little containers. They may be jars similar to this, uh, or they may be jars that I actually purchased the particular uh, ground spice in. Generally, what I store in my healing pantry will be, as I said, the backups to fill those jars, and I will often buy those in larger bags that are very easy to basically keep nice and dark and you know my 
prepper pantry, the area that I dedicate for my healing pantry, is what I would describe as a cool, dark place. But I also like to purchase those larger supplies in bags that are specifically made for trying to retain the freshness of those spices as long as possible. And I'll show some of those to you. I'll link in the description to some of the brands. Again, yeah, I have no connection to any of this, but some of the brands that I've uh, purchased in bulk and I've been very happy with, especially when it comes to the cinnamon because I like to buy cinnamon. Actually, there's two types of cinnamon, two types of spices, I should say, that are called cinnamon. Uh, but I really like to search out the Ceylon cinnamon because al although both have healthy properties to them, the true Ceylon cinnamon can be the more beneficial. So, I, and I use a lot of cinnamon. So I will buy that uh, in a bulk bag. Uh, that I keep, as I said, in my sealed that way in my healing pantry. And when I do open that, I then try to seal it up very tightly and maybe uh, take a next step and put it in some sort of uh, air, a, a, a jar that has a good airtight seal. But I, keep, I actually roll the bag up and put it into the jar uh, because I, re I really like the way some of these bags are made to help preserve uh, the taste and aroma, fragrance, whatever you say, of that particular spice. And again, like the herbs, if you come across some of these in fresh, fresh forms, like the ginger and the turmeric, those are great for keeping in your fridge. You can also freeze them. I freeze a lot of ginger. Uh, I love ginger. I use it in all different forms. I do buy the powdered ginger in bulk in the same way I buy the cinnamon in those really what I consider very high quality uh, storage bags that keep everything nice and dark and cool. Uh, but when it comes to garlic, I have a lot of fresh garlic. When it comes to onions, of course, I have a lot of fresh onions on hand as well. Uh, but I definitely like having onion powder and garlic powder on hand as well because they're wonderful for use in culinary purposes, but they also bring their medicinal properties uh, to the table, so to speak, when used in a culinary way. And Cami goes into a lot of detail about this, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, so know that you're going to have these in dried forms or in powdered forms or in ground forms in your healing pantry so that you have everything ready to go for you, everything ready to go for you uh, when you're making a remedy or even using in your culinary uh, dishes that you're preparing and you have them at the ready to restock what you might need in your working pantry when you are cooking with any of these herbs and spices. So that's really the focus of the healing pantry is always to be thinking, do I have everything I need to make the remedies I want? Do I have everything I need to make my culinary preparations that are also, as I said, bringing their medicinal properties to the table so that if I don't have fresh, if I don't have frozen, uh, if I'm running out of something in my working pantry, in, even in the dried form, do I have something backed up in my prepper pantry and ready to go? That is the whole reason that we create these prepper pantries. Or, you know, some people will think of them as extended, they use the term extended pantry, and then we nickname it the prepper pantry. But learning more about the overall pepper pantry, and I have such a detailed playlist for you if this is something that's new to you, where I talk about the whole Four Corners pantry. I have a specific focus on how to stock a prepper pantry, and I'm not talking about stocking it with junk food or anything fancy or expensive that you have to order online. I show you how to stock a prepper pantry with foods you can buy right at your grocery store. I show you how to do it for just adding as little as $5 a week 
extra to your grocery budget. And then I show you how to properly store what you buy so that it does have a long shelf life, that you can extend that shelf life as long as possible. And I show you the difference between uh, silica gel packs and oxygen absorbers, how to use them and when to use them, how to use mylar bags, and so on and so forth. So if this is very new to you, what we're talking about today, the concept of the prepper pantry, as well as the emergency pantry and now the healing pantry, uh, I'll definitely link to the d in the description below to the entire playlist. I have it all organized for you, and I think that it can make this project very easy. And keep in mind, you don't do this in a day. You do this little by little, week by week, and then before you know it, you're going to have a well-stocked prepper pantry that also includes your emergency pantry and also includes your healing pantry. And don't forget, when you're over at my website, be sure to download my 36-page, I think I call it the, the essential four corners pantry list. And that can be very helpful to you wherever you are on your journey to creating a traditional foods kitchen because I go over everything you want to think about stocking in your working pantry, in your refrigerator, in your freezer, and in your prepper pantry. And I don't just give you lists. I have a lot of information in there and I share why you want to stock these things, plus links to all kinds of recipes to make meals based on what you stock, because that's very important. You don't want to just stock stuff, you know, stock stuff willy-nilly. You want to stock things with which you have recipes then that you know how to use those things to make meals and to make tasty meals and easy meals and nutritious meals. Yeah. So know that that's 36 pages and it's really, it's free and it's very, uh, very comprehensive. And I think that it'll definitely help you. And while you're over there, you can, if you want, please sign up to be on my email list. And basically every week, I, I don't inundate you, just once a week, I send out a newsletter and hopefully that will also help you on your traditional foods journey uh, because I cover, I'll usually share with you my most recent video that I've released on, I release my videos usually on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock uh, central time and uh, my newsletter goes out about the same time and in that newsletter I also share a lot of other information relating to, tre to creating a traditional foods kitchen and and how to uh, I, I like the idea of being able to stay in touch with you because I feel we're really we're a community you know where you're as I often say you're my sweet friend you know and I feel we're creating a community of people who are on this journey and we may be anywhere on this journey you know I often say we're leaving a processed foods kitchen behind and we're on the journey to creating a traditional foods kitchen and it doesn't matter where you are on your journey because I never want you to feel stressed about any of this. As I often tell people when they ask me, Mary, where should I start, where should I start? And I always say, just start with a roast chicken. You make a whole roast chicken, you sit down and enjoy it, and it's gonna be better than anything that you can buy pre-made or pre-prepared for you or from a fast food restaurant, whatever the case may be. Start with a roast chicken, the next thing you know you've got a carcass left over, and next thing you know you're making bone broth, roast what I call roast chicken bone broth, and you're on your way to creating a traditional foods kitchen. So it really can be a lot easier and a lot, stress, lot less stressful uh, than you think. Now I want to talk about the supplies that you should probably be stocking in your healing pantry so that you can make the home remedies that you want. And again, all of this, whether it's the herbs, the spices, or the supplies, all of this is going to be based, or what you stock is going to be based on what you decide based on the books you read or the videos you watch from me on the Master Herbal Recipes what you want to make. You may not need every single one of these supplies if you're making just specific types of things that just require certain supplies. So always keep that in mind. And so again, similar to the spices, I just have little boxes here and you can check. Do I have this? Do I, you know, do I not have this? And we'll go over that in a minute, but I just want to mention once you have your herbs, once you have your spices, once you have your supplies, you've got your healing pantry stocked, then, you know, as I mentioned in the very beginning, 
I like to think of carving out an area within the healing pantry that I often call my herbal medicine cabinet because for the most part, a lot of the remedies that are home remedies that I would make are based on herbs and I can store them in my actual prepper pantry slash healing pantry area because uh, they're not perishable. The things that I do make that are perishable, uh, I will keep in my refrigerator or my freezer, what's ever appropriate. But for the most part, most of them can be kept in that little area within my healing pantry that I refer to as my herbal medicine cabinet. You may refer to it as your home remedy uh, medicine cabinet if you want, or your healing medicine cabinet within your healing pantry. You can see I can really <laughs> go down many a rabbit trail with all of this. But, uh, and it's just, I find it fun. I find it a lot of fun doing this, and I find it a lot of fun uh, really having a prepper pantry that kind of hits on all the bases. I, I have also in the past shared with you a couple of videos where I say uh, to the home cook or to the homemaker, wh whomever you are, man or woman, uh, that if you are in charge of the prepper pantry, there's a lot more to it than just food. Uh, there's a lot more to it than just the non-perishable foods or shelf-stable foods that you stock. Uh, you need to make sure you're prepared for emergencies and not just with food, but with the right supplies. And I, I shared a, a video with you about all the different things that you need to think about, including whether it's a generator or solar, solar power stations like what we have here, being we live in Central Texas, uh, we have a lot of, lot, lot of sun. It's pretty easy to power up one of those little uh, solar stations, pow solar power stations. Uh, but also coolers. What do you do in the event that you have, and special types of coolers that can be powered by a, a solar power station? Because what do you do if, if you have someone in your household who needs refrigerated medicine? And you, like us in, in Texas, uh, we were a week on and off, you know, with power. Uh, so what would you do in a situation like that? How would you keep the medicine of someone in your, your family or even maybe a neighbor who's caught off guard and needs to keep that uh, medicine cold. Uh, so I, I, that's a very extensive video. Uh, I'll be sure to link to that in the description below uh, because I go over the whole host of things uh, of supplies and equipment that you want to think about keeping on hand. Uh, and so that's why, but I, I have just learned, I mean, I, I grew up like this uh, from my parents, and then when I got married, I realized how important it is that if you're the person in charge of being prepared, and often it falls on uh, the person who's in, in charge of the kitchen, the person who's in charge of making the meals, and making sure in the beginning, your focus is making sure you have enough food to feed everybody, and so that in the event, that there's bad weather or illness or job loss or whatever the case may be, that you have some backups. Uh, and then from there, you start to think, well, okay, I'm in charge of this. I have to be very prepared. I have to make sure that I have, and, and it could be over-the-counter medication. It could be prescription medication. It could be home remedies. You know, I, I've shared with you, I'm, I'm a big proponent, and I know everybody feels differently about this, but in my humble opinion, I'm, I'm a big proponent of integrative medicine or, or what sometimes is referred to as complementary medicine. And I like uh, Dr. Andrew Weil very much, how he takes the best of both worlds. Yes, you know, there are times when we need modern medicine, you know, modern Western medicine and what our medical doctors can provide us. Uh, but we also like to bring in, especially those of us, uh, who are on a traditional foods journey, we know the healing power of food and herbs and spices. And we like to bring that into our healing journey along with whatever modern medicine we may be incorporating into our healing journey. And that's what I really like about Dr. Andrew Weil because he talks about the modern medicine but also bringing in all of these traditional medicines, if you will, 
uh, from traditional cultures that cultures have used uh, for centuries and how they can often work very beautifully together. And because of the interest in integrative medicine and many patients asking their doctors about integrative medicine, you're seeing more and more studies done on the benefits of traditional foods, on the benefits of herbs, on the benefits of spices. So there's a lot of good news. There's a lot coming down the pike, so to speak. There's a lot on the horizon uh, where we're learning more and more every day. And so the more we can educate ourselves about these integrative medicines, about these traditional medicines, and the more we can learn how to make them, it just allows us to be more prepared. I'm a real proponent, I learned this from my parents, they were two of the most self-sufficient people I ever met. They really believed, you know, you stand on your own two feet, you pull yourself up, and you take care of yourself, and you get the job done, you know? And I really believe the more self-sufficient all, all of those of us who are able to work hard and to create a self-sufficient lifestyle all the better for everyone else because there are always going to be people the elderly the infirmed maybe young children who are going to need our help who may need help of the community may may need help of of local services local governments whatever the case may be and the more the more there are those of us who say, we're okay, we're self-sufficient, we can stand on our own two feet, we can take care of ourselves. We may also be able to take care of some of those people who need help, you know, friends and neighbors, you know, who, who are up in years and, and may need to have a helping hand from somebody who's nearby. But that's why I really stress this. I, I stress the importance, the more self-sufficient all of us can be the better and the more self-sufficient those of us who are still able to work hard who are still able to work toward being self-sufficient all the better okay excuse me i have to get off the soapbox now as they say but i feel very passionate about this and so that's why i really wanted to introduce this concept of creating a healing pantry as part of your prepper pantry uh, because yes it's wonderful that we can use these type of remedies to integrate and support Western medicine, but it's also good to know that we can be self-sufficient. Are these cure-alls for everything and anything? No. But what if there was a situation where we weren't immediately able to get the care that we needed? And it could even be something simple, a cold, a flu, a sore throat, whatever, knowing that we, even if you have something over the counter, if that's how you want to stock your healing pantry, that's fine too. But having these things at the ready are wonderful. And I really think that, I, I don't talk a lot about this, but there are some wonderful books about how to really help, how to really maybe become, you can become the person in your family and even band together you know with your neighbors and just learn basic first aid knowing basic first aid is is very important and there's some wonderful books out there uh, what what if there's no doctor or things like that uh, but knowing some basic first aid can really help you help yourself or help others until actual, you know, Western medicine can arrive or Western uh, help, Western medications and, and, you know, an ambulance or whatever the case may be arrive. You hear so many stories about how even young children sometimes, because they were properly educated in basic first aid, uh, have been able to help adults, you know, until emergency services arrived. So, Definitely educating, about yourself, educating yourself about these things if you are the one in charge of your prepper pantry is all the better. The more knowledgeable we can be, the more prepared we can be, the more self-sufficient we can be, will never serve us wrong. Uh, we'll, we'll always be one step ahead, ahead of the game, so to speak, if we work towards always being prepared and always being self-sufficient. Now, getting back to supplies, 
what I wanted to mention, the kinds of things that you need, as I said, will be determined by the type of uh, remedies or home remedies that you like to make. And what I've got on here are like, for example, if you like to make tinctures, you're going to need something in which you can steep your herbs. And I generally, as I've shared with you in my master recipe for how to make medicinal herbal tinctures, I share with you uh, that I use uh, some type of alcohol. I usually, usually use vodka and just a mid-range price vodka, nothing fancy. Uh, but I know that you've asked me what are some other options. And yes, you can, uh, you can steep herbs in glycerin. Heidi over at Rain Country Homestead has some wonderful videos on this if you'd rather use glycerin instead of alcohol. Now I do think, and you'll want to double check with Heidi on this, glycerin may have a little bit of alcohol in it. I'm not sure I don't use glycerin. Uh, but that is an option. And then a third possibility is you can use uh, your uh, vinegar. This is uh, just a raw apple cider vinegar. It's got the mother. It's kind of, I don't know, I might have shaken it so you may not be able to see it. But uh, this is just a homemade raw apple cider vinegar. I have a video where I, sh it's a three part series actually on how to make it, how to steep it, how to decant it, the whole works. And you can use this to uh, extract the um, medicinal properties out of your herbs and spices and then decant them. And when you have tinctures, a really good way to keep them on hand are in dark bottles that have like a little eyedropper. That works very well. And also, too, if you're the kind of person that likes to make uh, something called hydrosols, I'm going to be doing a video on that. I've not done one yet, but that's a way to use steam to extract uh, some of the essential fragrances and oils out of herbs. It's not to the level uh, of strength of a uh, essential oil, uh, but it is something nice to have on hand. And if you have these like little spray bottles, these are great too. And I just want to mention, you may laugh at this, but I have a a video and I think it's called Kitchen Treasures from the Garbage or something like that and I'll definitely link to that where I talk about all the things to keep your eyes open for you know that others you know before you recycle or throw out anything and also in your community if, if you know of your neighbors having different types of bottles and jars you could ask them could you have them you know before they put them in the garbage or the recycling bin and sometimes if you've got little uh, oh, those charming little thrift shops in your area that really are more, and, and I, do, I do not use this word uncomplimentary. Please let me stress that. But my uh, son and I used to call these little shops, they're like, they're just packed with all kinds of stuff. And, and they're often very tiny and maybe a little dusty. We used to call them junk shops. And we used to love to go junking, and we loved these shops. So please know, even though I use the word junk, I don't mean it uncomplimentary. Uh, but you can find a lot of things there, too. You often don't need to buy uh, a lot of these supplies new. But I'll tell you about hydrosols. I, uh, when my husband worked outside the home, I would iron his shirts, and I would spray them with a hydrosol. You know how you would spray their cotton shirts and I would spray them with water and you know, to, when I'm ironing them to get the wrinkles out and whatnot. And I would use hydrosols made with herbs that I felt were very therapeutic, like lavender. And I did this because it, in my mind, I was saying to myself, this gives my husband like a little armor, so to speak, on his shirt to protect him from cold viruses and flu viruses, you know, whatever may be going around the office. Uh, so that's something that you may want to make. Uh, I also mentioned we've talked a lot about books already, and I think that if you're going to stock any of those homeopathic chews, you definitely want to have a homeopathic uh, manual, and I will link to the one that I like, uh, which actually I want to share with you. That one that I have, that book, that was actually recommended to me by my girlfriend who has raised, God bless her, what a blessing she has had. She has raised 11 children. 
and she was a huge, she's really the one who introduced me uh, to homeopathy many, you know, like 20 years ago. And uh, this is the book that she had recommended to me that I keep on hand with my homeopathic tablets. And uh, I, I think it's a wonderful reference. It covers everything. And so then I've got different things. You know, if you're making salves, you want to think of some beeswax. Maybe you want coconut oil, olive oil. You know, these can be things that you have right in your working pantry. Uh, you can have some backups. Co olive oil, I don't tend to store uh, a lot because, you know, over time it can go rancid more easily than some of your saturated fats. Uh, but I will often have a backup bottle of olive oil in my freezer. And we're very lucky here in Texas, in Central Texas, we have uh, a number of olive ranches, as they're called, and we can buy Texas olive oil, so that's kind of fun. Uh, but I do keep uh, backups of coconut oil in my uh, healing pantry because coconut oil, first of all, it's, it's very therapeutic, it's very healing, and it can be wonderful uh, to use when making salves. Uh, also, uh, I like to have tallow, and I have videos where I show you where I make tallow balm, both for your face and uh, for your feet. And you will, uh, you've brought, if you've been with me a while, you've heard me say this, but you know, tallow is rendered suet. What is suet? Suet is beef fat. It, it comes from around the organs of the cow. And when I make tallow balm, I always joke and say, yes, ladies, we're putting beef fat on our faces. <laughs> but uh, tallow is very, when, when it's been rendered from suet, it's very shelf stable. You can certainly keep it in the refrigerator or the freezer, but it is shelf stable, which is nice for at least a year. Uh, so that's something good. So those are some of the things that I cover here. Uh, you also, you know, want to have different types, different size funnels, you know, for filling. Uh, jars with various dried goods or liquids, you know, whatever you're you're going to be making. And you want to think about keeping some type of liquid sweetener on hand if you like to make syrups. I really like to keep honey, a pourable honey on hand. Certainly there are other liquid sweeteners you can use, but I find honey, raw honey especially, and in a pourable form, it's loaded with nutritional properties and healing properties. And so I, I, that's the one I like to keep. And then you need, you know, a few different other things like mesh strainers. You know, you can, if you see my uh, master recipe series, you'll see all the little different things I have. But that's kind of the bulk of it. Uh, mesh strainers, uh, it, it, sometimes a mortar and pestle is handy to have on hand. But if you don't want to do that, you can certainly use, it, you know, you just, grinding something or crushing something in your mortar and pestle. You can certainly use one of those electric spice grinders. They can make the job very easy. And one thing I want to mention is sometimes you may be making a particular remedy that may be odorous. And what I think is comes in very handy uh, is having one of those little portable cooktops. If you've seen my video, my cooking videos, you know that uh, I often will use that, the one I have, it's made by Cuisinart, and, and I'm happy with it. I, I think they're all pretty, pretty similar, you know, in how they operate. Uh, but having a little portable cooktop that you can take outside if you're making something that's exceptionally odorous, uh, that can come in very handy. Also, you want to make sure that you have, you know, a, a, some pots and pans that, and you can pick these up at thrift stores, nothing brand new because you want to have certain pots and pans uh, dedicated to using to make your home remedies because sometimes they might stain or they might just get sticky and, and different things, you know, but I have a, a dedicated pot uh, that I use uh, when I'm making things like salves and oils uh, or, or using oils to make salves and, uh, you know, with the beeswax and all of this, that, and the other thing. Uh, having a dedicated a saucepan can really come in handy. And what I do want to talk about here is these uh, muslin bags I mentioned um, earlier, but just made of some type of, you know, as I said, it might be organic. I'm not 100% sure, but I do know they're 100% cotton and uh, often referred to as cotton muslin. 
And these are little, what I like to do with this is, and my son always recalls this from when he was a little boy, I'll sometimes just fill these with dried spices, things, and, and dried herbs. So I might put in here maybe some rosemary, it's very uh, stimulating, and I'll put in some cinnamon sticks, maybe I've got on here cloves, uh, uh, various things. And then I'll kind of just uh, work it with my hands to help release uh, some of the essential oils. And when my son would have a cold, I would give this to him and he would take this to bed with him and he really liked it because he would smell it and it would help kind of open up his uh, nasal passages. So that can be something very handy. But this is something I want to show you because I just think these are so cute. If you like to make uh, herbal teas and uh, especially you know the medicinal herbal teas uh, like ones that can help you with sleep or relieving uh, or, or sort of maybe lessening some of your cold and flu symptoms these are so cute because these are just again little muslin bags and you put your herbs spices whatever you're making in here and then you just pull this little string and you close it right up like that and now you have your little tea bag and when you're done, you can empty out your herbs and spices and you can wash this and reuse it. I think this is great. Do they make paper versions of these for people who like to make homemade uh, teas? Yes. Uh, but this I find is just nice because you can reuse this. They really hold up well and last beautifully. Another option is you can always use a tea bowl. It's used, I know some people uh, may steer clear of them if they think they're made of aluminum. You really want to look for tea balls that are made from stainless steel, and those are great because they are endlessly reusable. But what's nice about using these little bags is that you can make these in advance, and then you can just keep them in a jar, you know, one of these nice ones that has a gasket, so it's kind of like an airtight jar, and then when you want to make a cup of tea, especially when you're not feeling well, you can just grab one of these. Uh, so that's, it's just very convenient. Uh, and also if you like taking something, if you work outside the home and you want to take your teas with you, these are very handy. Uh, and then you can just transfer the contents, you know, just to a little container that you bring with you and then bring it home and wash it. Uh, the tea bowl is a little more involved because you're going to have your loose tea, say, in a container and you're going to have to scoop some out, put it into the tea bowl, and then make your tea. Now, if you have your mixture already made as opposed to just individual herbs, it's really not that big a deal. It's pretty easy to do. You can just scoop it and then let it steep in the tea bowl. Once you print out your inventory list and you start creating your healing pantry within your prepper pantry, and then you start creating your herbal medicine cabinet, be sure to click on this video over here where I have all the master herbal recipes for you in one playlist, along with a lot of other home remedies that you can make. And I look forward to seeing you over there in my Texas Hill Country kitchen. Love and God bless.